I was in Prague when Cardinal Cassidy apologized on behalf of the Vatican for the Shoah, the first time that that statement was made. And with a small group that met with John Paul, he spoke in Mishnaic Hebrew. Now, first of all, I dare say that half of our group didn't understand what he was talking about. <laughs> Secondly, he translated. The second point is, for a pope to quote rabbinic literature, and not biblical literature, but rabbinic literature is a major statement, namely of the rabbinic period, which, you know, it's part of the intertestamental period, and also after Jesus' ministry on, uh, you know, was present, was not uh, whatever they used to call rabbinic literature, you know, the gasping breath of a dying religion. Um, we are brothers, as you listen to what uh, Father John said, brothers, covenant not revoked. He visited Israel, not just the Holy Land. When John Paul went to Israel, he visited, uh, you know, he visited the Palestinians, he visited the Jordanians, but he went to Israel. He didn't say he was going to the Holy Land. You understand the significance of that? He prayed at the Western Wall, he visited Yad Vashem, he went to the Rome Synagogue. You know, he had the real sense that relationships with the, the Vatican's relationships with Jews and the Judaism we're on a new and a productive course. I preached about it, I taught it, and even though um, I spoke and taught to many skeptical people in the congregation and elsewhere, um, I said they were wrong. And they said to me, you know, wait. The Vatican has an abiding problem with anti-Semitism, and let's see if this holds. And the church, another source of my disappointment, the church was a real force in the world for good. They opened up the doors. They went out into the world. And believe me, I mean, we religious folk um, who believe in God as the creator, that our ethics are an expression of our understanding of divinity, that truth and integrity have to be practiced in deed as well as in word. You know, we all need all the help we can get. And Pope John Paul was a great help. And now what's happening? There is the church's relationship to the Jewish people, but more important, from my perspective, is what I see and many others see as turning one's back on Vatican II. From the Jewish perspective, you know, I mean, Williamson, uh, John mentioned all of it. Um, welcoming back, I mean, I won't go through quotes, John had some good ones. What's happening to Vatican II? No, Scrittante was just a small, a couple of paragraphs in, uh, you know, in, in, in the Vatican II documents. And by the way, the documents didn't end there. After the publication of Nosferitate, there were at least two major Vatican documents, one on the teaching of Jews and Judaism, which was disseminated widely. One was on uh, teaching the Bible. I mean, it was fantastic, really fantastic. Um, you ask anybody in the church and they'll tell you no. Nobody's turning their back on Vatican II. But that's not the way it's turning out. That's not the way it's going down. The sadness is that Benedict lost moral and ethic credibility, not just with Jews with anybody who reads and follows, <coughs> follows the Roman Catholic Church. It's clear, at least, I, you know, I make these bold statements. You have to understand that uh, I'm not an expert on Vatican relations. 
Um, I think the church is in trouble internally. I mean, the folk that now have to deal with the issues raised by Benedict's whatever, you know, namely the department that deals with liturgy, interfaith relationships, other departments, were never consulted. And now they're left holding the bag. They have to do something. They were the ones who were blindsided. I think it's been disastrous for the church. I think it's been bad for the world. One thing Pope Benedict gets, and that is Europe's falling apart. I just hope the church isn't going to begin to follow suit. <laughs>